Hi, welcome to High Vibe Astrology. This is Jennifer. And in this video, we're going to be discussing the May 5th full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. And the moon is at 14 degrees, 58 minutes. So it's really 15 degrees. The moon represents the public. So we can expect at this full moon lunar eclipse to experience in others a more intensely brooding nature where they may be laying blame on you for something that you may be innocent of altogether. But just keep in mind that people are going to be all over the map with regard to their own evolution and practicing the connection that allows them to forgive, allows them to see what is happening, release the blame, and take the higher road and allow people to just simply be where they are and not contribute to the blame and shame by reacting in anger ourselves. Being obstinate, which is what the sun in Taurus can do, or the need to be right. I mean, is it more important to be right about something and to prove somebody wrong? or to know what is really going on to facilitate harmony and simply allow healing to take place. That is what creates peace that passes all understanding. It's not a matter of being superior to someone else. It's a matter of cutting them some slack. We all have moments in our lives that we wish we could take back. We all have moments in our lives when we allow the shadow to create a situation that was unwanted. But unless we forgive ourselves, we will never be able to forgive another person. And we will always be projecting our own weaknesses, vulnerabilities onto other people. I'm reminded of, you know, the the scene in the Bible where Christ said to the mob, let the one who is without sin cast the first stone. And it is so very easy in our world, especially now, but in our, in our families, within our close circle of friends, within our work setting, everywhere we go, it is just too easy to lay blame on people and circumstances and situations. But it would be so healing to the entire world if each one of us were able to look inside first. And that is what the high vibe of the moon in Scorpio really calls us to do. It's the introspection. It's the shrewd examination and the astute awareness of the inner mechanisms at work in all things. And that reminds me of another uh, quote, remove the boulder from your own eye before you attempt to remove the speck in someone else's. So if we are practicing the high vibe of Scorpio, we're able to take it as the alchemist and raise the vibration to the more malleable essence of gold. That's what alchemists do. So whether we're looking at this esoterically or exoterically, meaning metaphysically or actually physically, we are turning something that is heavy and burdensome into something that is light, liquid, and malleable. So unless and until we are able to recognize that what we are encountering is teaching us something or providing an opportunity to take the higher road, to evolve our own gifts and talents to the point where we can finally transcend trauma by helping another person transcend their own trauma. And that would also be considered the high vibe of Scorpio, because rather than seeking revenge um, or teaching someone a lesson, instead, when you see the vulnerabilities of another person, which is the keen instinct of the Scorpio nature, instead of attacking or instead of retaliating, you are able to raise the vibration as the alchemist, raise the heaviness to something lighter. 
it's a big ask, but if all of us could just remember to do that, our world would change in a heartbeat. And this is where we are heading as one human family. And with this conjunction of Uranus to the sun, Uranus, which represents that awakening that we are all moving into, that higher evolutionary purpose, where we can take quantum leaps into the future, into evolution, and extricate and liberate ourselves from the deep, intense trauma we've experienced in the past. And as we do that, we liberate other people, or at least provide the opportunity for them to liberate themselves and to hold themselves accountable and ask for healing. We all have help from our ascension team. Let's just call it that. Angels, guides, ascended masters. But they will not violate the universal law of free will. So we have to ask for help. And when we do, it becomes immediately available. And that's symbolic of the Uranus conjunct the sun, receiving instant help and enlightenment. Mercury retrograde conjunct the sun and the north node is helping us reflect upon um, our own thought processes before we just blurt out what we think needs to be said in that moment. With Mercury on one side of the sun and Uranus on the other, we can receive instant help and messages that will facilitate liberation from past trauma. And this is what's going to help free other people as well. But if we don't recognize our need for help, we won't ask. And then our Ascension team cannot interfere. So I invite all of you with me to just stay open to what the situation and people around us are providing in the way of an opportunity for us to go a little deeper, to ask for more help when we need it, and to take a step back when someone triggers us, and to just say, okay, Ascension team, I need some help here. Help me take the higher road. There are many more aspects we could talk about, but that is the main theme, and I'm going to leave it there. The affirmations and frequencies follow. So thank you so much for tuning in again, and I appreciate all of you and all the ways that you support this channel. Until next time, this is Jennifer. Just a little note before we begin. For those planets that are making an aspect to the nodes, I am using Sedna for the south node in Scorpio so that we attune with the highest vibration and expression of Scorpio. So Sedna is going to be used for the Scorpio South Node, and Venus is used, of course, for the Taurus North Node. Sun, full moon, and Sedna for the Scorpio full moon. I now release all unforgiveness toward myself and others, holding the highest healing intention for everyone involved. <laughs> Sun, Moon, and Uranus for the conjunction and opposition. People respond to me according to my soul's need to grow and evolve, and I receive instant help and insight when I remember to ask. Sun, Mercury, and Uranus for the conjunction. When I call upon my ascension team, I receive instant insight and guidance that harmonizes and heals challenging situations.
Mercury, Venus, and Sedna for the conjunction and opposition to the nodes. What I think, perceive, and communicate sets the tone for the direction my life takes, and I now commit to ceasing all complaints and to trusting my divine guidance. Jupiter, Venus, and Sedna for the conjunction and opposition to the nodes. Infinite abundance, awareness, and miracles accompany my path and activate possibilities in those who wish to see. Saturn, Venus, and Sedna for the sextile and trine to the nodes. The structures of religion and spirituality are becoming more fluid, mystical, and all-encompassing, and this allows me to sense the interconnectedness of all sentient beings. Venus and Neptune for the square. When I attune myself to the divine and mystical realms, I easily attract the information I require to make better choices. Mars and Neptune for the trine. As I align my energy, passion, and purpose toward the divine and mystical realms, my actions yield miraculous results in the physical world as well. <laughs> 